Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe, maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yeah, somebody wants me. My name is Corey Heights, and welcome to the first episode of the Prep Athletics Podcast. Prep Athletics is my company, which is a prep school consulting service for athletes around the world. And what we're going to do in this podcast is talk more about prep schools, the benefits of them. We're going to talk to different coaches and people involved in that world. But we want to be a clearinghouse for information so families and players can make the right decisions uh, if they decide they want to go down the route of uh, attending a prep school. Uh, To give you a little background on myself, my name is Corey Heights and I grew up in Lexington, Kentucky. I graduated from Lexington Catholic High School in 1995 and my goal my entire life was to play Division I. Uh, My father, his two brothers all played D1. My father played at West Virginia before playing pro in Switzerland. His older brother was 6'11 and played at Oklahoma. Uh, My dad's seven feet tall, by the way. And their baby brother, Tom, played at Kentucky from 1980 to 84 and went to the Final Four his final year and then was drafted by the Indiana Pacers. My first cousin is named Renee, Renee Miller. She's six foot five and she played at Moorhead State. And then her baby brother, my first cousin as well, Brad Miller, uh, spent his senior year at high school at a prep school called MCI, which is Maine Central Institute that was coached by Max Good. And he went from there to play four years at Purdue and then 14 years in the NBA to include making the all-star team, both the Indiana Pacers and the Sacramento Kings. So my goal my entire life was to play D1. And when I was a senior in high school, I was six foot seven, uh, about 190 pounds, and I was waiting to hit my growth spurt so I could grow as tall as my dad, my uncles, and my cousin. And the only way for me to potentially hit that spurt before college was to do a post-grad year at a prep school. And I ended up choosing the Air Force Academy's prep school, uh, I was getting recruited by Army, Navy, and Air Force, and their prep schools had the pretty uh, great benefit of being free. In fact, it wasn't even free. They actually paid you every month uh, since you had to enlist in the military to go there. So I think back in 1995, 96, we got about $550 a month. Now, I'm not sure what it is. It's probably almost triple that, but nice benefit of going to that prep school, and I actually went there to try to figure out if staying at Air Force was the best option, or if I had a growth spurt, maybe I could go somewhere else. So I experienced it. I ended up staying and playing in the Air Force Academy's program, which was at a D1 level. And after that graduated, I became a military officer and served five years. Now, my cousin went to prep school, and he has said many times that he would not have made it to the NBA without that year away from home. And if I don't go to the Air Force Academy's prep school, I'm not playing D1. So the reason I'm so passionate about this topic is that it's directly affected the trajectory of my family's outcome. My cousin's not having the NBA career he's having. I'm not getting the education playing where I wanted to play without prep schools. So what I've been doing since 2008 is trying to help families decipher among all these prep school options out there. And we'll get into more details between prep schools and basketball academies and some of the different sizes, shapes, and flavors of all these schools. But this being the first episode of the podcast, I want to go over just a few basics on what is a prep school and what are the benefits of playing basketball at one. So a prep school is a private boarding school. Some of these schools have day students, but a majority of them that we're going to talk about for this conversation is a boarding school. So there's dorms, there's gyms, There's administration, there's real teachers in classrooms with normally smaller class sizes, and they're usually in pretty beautiful places. About 95% of the ones that uh, I deal with are in the East Coast, mostly in New England. There's a few sprinkled throughout, and about the farthest one going west uh, is Lake Forest Academy in Chicago, Illinois. So there are a lot of options out there. Like I said, they're all different. One of them, such as West Nottingham Academy, up in Northern Maryland, was actually founded in 1746 before the U.S. was even a country. So there's a lot of history with these prep schools. Um, And what we're going to talk about today are the basketball benefits of it. In future episodes, we'll talk about the academic benefits, the cultural benefits, the maturity that can happen. But just for today's episode, we're going to focus on the basketball part of it. 
So what's one of the first advantages of going to a prep school for basketball? Well, one, the coaching is normally superior than your average high school. Um, I, for this conversation, um, I'm thinking about some coaches in the New England prep school world that have been doing it for a long time and have coached the college level. And these coaches have coached great players uh, year after year. And some of these guys are older. Some of these guys are coming out of the college ranks. Um, some who haven't played college ball. I know there's one that had a dad that was a D1 head coach. And there's just there's there's tons of coaching benefits that come from uh, playing at a prep school. And usually when you talk to a prep school uh, and talk to a coach that might be recruiting you, really ask them a lot of questions because they're going to be the one that's going to be determining uh, you know practice times, determining uh, what coaches they're calling in college programs, determining your playing time. So coaching, I mentioned that first because it's such a vital part of the prep school world. There's absolutely differences in academics, differences in some schools being rural, some being closer to cities or in cities. Um, but if you're looking to do uh, prep school. Obviously, you want to put it all together culturally and academically, but the coach is going to be a very important piece of the project, and they're usually better, I'd say, on average than most uh, of the rest of the high school coaches across America. Secondly, these coaches are very connected from high major of D1 all the way down to D3, and they have to be. Uh, a lot of these prep school teams, some like Brewster and Hargrave, might have 10 Division One guys in their team a year, right? There's other teams in the prep school world where there might be a, a roster full of kids that maybe there's only one or two D3 players on the team each year, right? The rest might be walk-ons or kids just doing it for fun. And then there's everything in between. So these coaches at these prep schools must have connections at the college level for all the different types of players. They got to be able to help place and advise the kids that are their starters and their best players that might be looking uh, from the mid to high major range. And they've also got to help the kid in the end of the bench who might be paying full tuition to go to the school, but who also wants to play in college. And he's got to help find him a potential D3 school as well. Um, so these coaches are going to be way more connected than your average high school coach as well. And they've got to do it every single year. A school like Bridgeton Academy in Maine is similar to John Calipari in Kentucky to where it's strictly a post-grad school. So every year, Coach Whit LeJour is getting 12 new kids on his roster. And every year, he's got to place 12 kids at varying degrees of levels in the college ranks. So for him, he's got to have that that wide uh, range of contacts. And he's going to have that more than your average high school coach who might have a family who might not live on campus, who might have uh, you know, be teaching four history classes, who might just not have the connections um, since they haven't been involved with it as much as some of these prep school coaches. So the coaching on the court uh, and then the relationship these coaches have with colleges is a huge advantage right there. Also, another thing too is daily practice. All right. A lot of kids come from good high school programs where they're the man and maybe they don't get challenged every day because the guy guarding them is just not going to is not going to push them. Most of these prep schools, you will go there and you will not be the best player on the team. All right, Even if you are the best player, you're at least going to have someone good behind you pushing you every day in practice. So the competition in the prep school world is much better than your average high school out there. If you go to Brewster Academy or Hargrave, you've got five-on-five -five practices where it's five D1 guys against five D1 guys. And just through osmosis, you're going to get better, right? Let alone all the work and extra skill set you're going to be putting in against other good players. So something there to consider, okay? Um, you'll also play in front of more college programs and scouts, all right? One thing I want to mention about the prep school world that's, that's pretty neat and unique is the open gym period they run. And we're going to assume right now for this conversation that this is non-COVID times because right now in the 2020-21 season, COVID has kind of shaken things up. But how it used to be and how it's probably going to go back to in the near future is that during the fall, once a kid gets to school and joins the program, uh, they have open gym periods. And these open gym periods are open for college coaches to come in and watch the teams. And the nice thing about this in New England is there's a lot of schools that are near each other uh, geographically, right? Might be 20 miles away from one school, might be 15 miles away from another. And they all work in conjunction with each other, with these neighboring schools, to set up their open gym time so a college coach can see all three schools in one day. For example, there might be a school in New Hampshire that has an open gym at 6 in the morning, and a college coach can go see that. Then he can drive 25 miles away to the neighboring prep school and see their open gym at 3.30 in the afternoon, and then drive 
you know, another 25 miles away to the next prep school who has their open gym at 715 at night. So if I'm a college coach, I can fly to a major city, see one practice, maybe see one kid, and then have to fly back. Or I can go to New England, spend five days there, and see three open gyms each day for five days. So you're getting way more bang for your buck. And as a player, you're going to have way more eyes on you uh, during this open gym period than you would at a normal high school. Um, I coached at Gonzaga High School in Washington, D.C., uh, 2011 through 2013. And we had about, I think, over the course of two years, nine D1 players, maybe 10. Uh, So we had a lot of coaches come through there. But if they were coming to our practice, that was the only practice they could see that day because trying to fight Washington, D.C. traffic during rush hour, you weren't going to easily be able to go cross town to DeMatha or Paul VI and see a full practice. So that's one of the challenges there that even nationally ranked high schools like Gonzaga deal with, but they've really figured it out. They really work as a team up in New England uh, with these. Also, the military academies. Uh, Fork Union Hargrave, they work there um, in Massanutten in, in, in Virginia. These military academies work together as well on their open gyms. So usually coaches will make the rounds and go see all these three schools too. So there's conjunction there. You're going to be seen by more schools. Secondly, there's scouting services like Adam Finkelstein does the New England Recruiting Report, the NERR, and that is seen by college coaches from all over the country as well, where each team will mention what players they have and what level it's at. So if a coach is looking for a high academic point guard, they can go through that list of schools and call the coaches up or go see an open gym or go see them at a showcase and try to find a high academic point guard. So that's another one of the advantages too is all the scouting that goes uh, on in there uh, in the prep school world. Last thing I want to mention is since a lot of these campuses are boarding situations, the gym and the weight room are on campus too. So you have a chance as a player if you want to get more reps in, more shots in, uh, pump some more iron, it's going to be on campus. So a lot of places, the kids have the code to the gym or key to the weight room, and they can get a lot more reps in both on the court and lifting weights versus them having to drive to their high school, have to compete with other teams, uh, get permission from the coach. It's just it's just much more simplistic at prep schools, and you usually get a lot more time to train and, and, and get better at your sport. So those are the basic benefits of going to an athletic program at a prep school. I, I help all sports, but I'm more specific with basketball. And that's just some of the benefits of it that I experienced, that my cousin experienced, that a lot of the kids I've helped have experienced. So with that, thank you for tuning in to the first episode of the Prep Athletics Podcast. I'm looking forward to a lot more and a lot more interesting discussions, topics, debates. And um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, My website is www dot prep athletics.com and on there you can find my phone number find my email i'm on all the social media uh, so feel free to reach out there as well but thank you very much for joining and i'm looking forward to it doing it again in the future thank you 